I've been basically counseling and working with uh, local Haitian pastors. These men, uh, since the earthquake, have been misplaced. Uh, they're hungry. Uh, they've been giving their all to work with their people in their churches, and no one has really taken the time just to sit down with them and listen to their stories and offer them some encouragement. So really it's shepherding the shepherds. They're just sharing their experience of the day of the earthquake and the things that they went through, the losses that they suffered, the injuries that some of their families have gone through. Uh, one of the pastors that I dealt with yesterday had lost his son, daughter-in-law, and baby, uh, his grandchild. So he has suffered emotionally uh, through the loss of his family members. Um, they uh, obviously have had very little, little food. None of them have had proper rest. Uh, I haven't talked with one pastor uh, here who has been able to sleep in his home since the earthquake. And they'll talk about sleeping in tents, but it's not what you and I in America usually think of as a tent. At best, uh, most of these tents, as they call them tents, are uh, just some sort of canopy, some sort of tarp that's propped up uh, with sticks that they can find, and that's where they've slept uh, every day these last two months since the earthquake. Uh, so again, they're, they're malnourished, uh, they, they've not had proper rest. Uh, one pastor yesterday told, told me that when he lays down he can't sleep because he's concerned and anxious about responding to the needs of his people. He uh, is trying to take care of 400 church members up on a mountain and uh, he's trying to find food for them. There's not enough food. And uh, so literally, in every sense of the word, emotionally, spiritually, as far as his resources, he's spent. And so uh, it's just been a time to sit down with them, hear their stories, uh, make some notes, uh, offer those notes to people hopefully that can start getting some more resources to them. Uh, but more than anything else is just lending a sympathetic ear uh, pastor to pastor, and then establishing uh, resources for them to call on one another so they can pray for one another and encourage one another as they work through this catastrophe. The Haitians will tell you, number one, that they need your prayers. Uh, they need, need us to keep them on their mind, on our minds, and, and pray for them daily. They're relying on that, they're depending on that, they're praying for us. But then beyond that, that they just need resources. Uh, we've already done the buckets of hope and those will be on their way uh, a few weeks from now and uh, that's going to be a big blessing to these people. But they're going to need, uh, they're gonna need uh, food support. Uh, in uh, a few weeks to months from now I know that uh, through disaster relief they're going to uh, plan on some uh, demolition crews coming here to help remove some of the debris. Uh, there are locations where there's just absolutely no way that a front end loader or heavy equipment can get in there. And so they're just gonna need some really, really strong men to come with sledgehammers and uh, beat things up, tear things down, and, and remove the debris. Uh, I believe that there's gonna be opportunities for Baptists to minister here in Haiti uh, for years to come.